I struggled, but not for the reason you would imagine. Um, basically, my PC crashed at some point. Oh, no. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is John David and I'm the host of the How To Get An Analytics Job podcast. I've also created a course on Udemy focusing on the exam DA100 for Power BI. To date, we've had over 32,000 students sign up to take the course so far. And we're actually going to be interviewing one of those 32,000 today. And we're going to be tackling the question, can you pass the exam DA100 without having any work experience with Power BI? Well, the short answer is yes. Arnold, our guest, has done exactly that. But I do want to put a caveat on that explanation. Arnold has over 15 years of experience in BI and analytics work. So this has undoubtedly helped him pass the exam especially the data modeling section, which covers up to 30% of the exam. So if you're both brand new to Power BI and analytics, I would not advise actually taking this exam. But hey, if you're a newbie, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. The Tableau Desktop Specialist Certification is designed for those who only have three months of experience. So it's a much lower bar for you to cover than the exam DA100. And I would say getting a certification is a great way to personally brand yourself. It can help you stand out when you're trying to get your next analytics opportunity. Without further ado, let's jump into the interview with Arnal. Arnal, correct me if I'm wrong, you have years of experience in business intelligence, just not any experience with Power BI? Correct. Awesome. I have about 15 years experience with uh, BI tools in general. Okay. Care to elaborate a little bit about kind of who you are as a professional? Sure. So I worked uh, in many BI projects and many tasks. I worked on in the data modeling piece, data warehousing, um, the ETL, which is the data loading. And the front end tools I know the best are the, let's say, the traditional solutions like, uh, you know, like uh, business objects and Cognos and all of these, which is not exactly like the, the typical data visualiz visualization solution like uh, Tableau or Power BI. Tableau, you know very well, I guess, right. and, and Power BI and all of these. So, yeah, that's that's where I come from. Interesting. So, hmm. So you think that the fact that you've worked in Power in just with business intelligence so long, you kind of understood the concepts, and then taking the course, it was like figuring out what buttons to push and, and how to execute on the theory that you already know. To a degree, to a degree, because the piece where, you know, it's, it's more difficult is of course the, you know, like the, the visualization, you know, like the tips, like, okay, like in, in some, at some point in your course, you mentioned like, oh, you, you should use a tree map instead of a pie chart or things like that. So this is like, not something that I'm very natural with, or, you know, like, um, uh, the, the other piece that was very difficult for me was the administration piece, because this is typically something where, you know, when you don't have experience with the tool, it's very difficult to, to grasp, right? But yeah, for, let's say all the data piece, um, even if it was different technology, uh, it was very similar to what you could do with other tools, but usually with other tools, as you know, it's separated. It's, it's like the ETL on one side and then the, the database on the other side and so on. And here it's kind of mixed together, right? But that's, yeah. that's uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're basically trying to, to commoditize. And well, some, a, a trend that I'm seeing kind of in the analytics space in general is that they're moving away from coding and like having to do a lot of manual input to where what right. Tableau and Power yeah. BI do is you click a couple buttons in the GUI in the graphic user interface and then it does all the coding on the back end. That's right. Yeah. So that's, well, that's here. Here, that's, I mean, if you if you know BI to compare a little bit, what well, this is what I, I figured out is um, the prep part that you mentioned in your course, which is uh, what I, I think it's called M language, if I'm not mistaken. M code. Yeah. M code, right? So that that's basically the equivalent of the ETL piece before you 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 load in the in the da traditional database, and then the DAX code would be more like the engine. Um, that you apply after afterwards. 
Okay, cool. So, so you, you are pretty steeped and you know BI well. I guess let's move on to the second question I had for you. What was the exam experience like for you? Was it really hard? Um, did you struggle in certain sections or was it pretty smooth sailing throughout? Um, I struggled, but not for the reason you would imagine. Um, basically, my PC crashed at some point. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like 70% of the exam. And uh, because they were saying, oh, we don't see you in the webcam anymore because, you know, they, they record you mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, you, you're not cheating or something like that. And uh, the, my PC crashed and I was very stressed because it was very hard for me to return to the, um, to the, meet, you know, you know, to the, the meeting session. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they, were, they were nice to accept me back after like 30 minutes uh, <laughs> trying to contact them. Okay, so you still so My, my first advice is when, when you get the, the meeting number, uh, remember it somewhere just in case. That would be my, uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> my first recommendation. <laughs> okay, but, so. Uh, so, so that's for, for one. And then for two, um, something uh, was, yeah, it was not easy, of course. Um, but I don't think they try to trick you that much. What I mean by that is if you really spend time reading the questions, there are many tricks that help you not to do too many mistakes, I would say. They don't, they don't, really, they don't try that much to trick you. They, if, if you know your stuff, you, you should be fine. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, the, other, the other thing that I noticed, and I don't know if it's the same for others that uh, talk to you, but the, the time they, 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 uh, they give you, I think it's about three hours. That's, the, that's uh, you know, set up, mm. but um, there's plenty of time in my opinion. I don't know if other people told you that, but uh, I had like 30 or 40 minutes left when I finished. Well, so it depends because I, so I don't know if you've seen the, the course like landing page recently, but I've had 32,000 students sign up for it. So I'm having a wide range of people from, <laughs> I've never even, I don't even understand Excel or I've, I've worked maybe an internship in Excel to people kind of right. like you who are industry experts and they just want to, um, I guess, well, what's your motivation for getting the certification just to kind of bolster your resume and maybe get another opportunity? Yes, correct. Right. And I was uh, also interested in getting more into Microsoft because this is not like the, well, I know some, I, I've done some SQL Server uh, and I'm, I've done a, a little bit of SSIS as well. But yeah, I, well, to be honest, I was looking at the market and I've seen that Power BI is training up. I mean, even though we, well, in Europe, you could say, yeah, you still have a lot of click view which is a bit like the legacy, mm -hmm. it's still there. But uh, yeah, trend, yeah um, I guess because of the pricing, uh, Power BI is trending up. So that was my main motivation to so have the certificate. So that's, that's a really interesting concept that we can kind of unpack a little bit. So I think that Microsoft, yes, it has a very low price point, but also too, think about all the organizations who already have Excel and Microsoft Office or Microsoft Suite. Right. Uh, no, no. I, 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 a lot of co the comments I, I, I get about you know competition is the, a lot of people tell me Tableau is better, like uh, in terms of you know like uh, um, the visualization you can do, the options, the, the ease of use. But Power BI is easier to integrate to our you know architecture, right. both in terms of pricing, of course. We we talked about that, but yeah, as you said, like uh, uh, integrate with the other Microsoft tools. So. Yeah. Right. So, so my understanding of the difference between ta Tableau and Power BI, what's, what's funny to, about me is that I've, I do most of my consulting work in Tableau, but I'm more well known for my Power BI classes and courses. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just funny how that works. Um, so I think Tableau is a data visualization software that has ETL tacked on top of it. And I think Power BI mm -hmm. is a data modeling software that has data visualization tacked on top of it. So that's kind of like the, the difference is okay. there. But speaking on that point of data modeling, that's upwards of 30% of the exam. And I think that you being kind of in this space for so long and knowing data modeling, like the back of the, your hand, that probably helps you, you know, yeah. pass this well, exam quite a bit. Yeah, well, especially like the, there were many questions around, around, you know, what kind of relationship do you need to set up between these two tables in the Power BI model? Like, is it a one-to-many or things like that? So this is exactly like you would see in other 
API concept. The only thing that's a bit, let's say, new is the, mm -hmm. the bi-directional feature, right? Because this is not something, right? Like the right, right. setup like uh, bi-directional and, uh, and because this is something that's not like natural uh, for the traditional uh, data modeling. And, you know, even though the, the general advice is not to use it, you know, in some cases you're, you're supposed to do it. So, uh, so there were a bit of questions around that, but yeah, most, it's very similar to what you would uh, see. So is that 30% 30, 30 kind of accurate? Like, do you think that 30%? Yeah, I think 25 to 30%, right? If we, right. If we talk about the outline, that, that's on the, the Microsoft uh, site. Interesting. Um, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I, so many questions. Remember, remember like uh, the, um, the exam is like, uh, I think, what was his name? Sorry, like Toby, the one that uh, talked to you last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you have like, let's say 70, 75% of the exam is like individual questions, right? So if you, if you don't answer, if you don't know the answer, you just put something, whatever. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to answer the next question. And you have two case studies at the very end, like five questions each, I believe, if I remember, or something like that. So, so that means that the, the, the content of each question is not like extremely complex. It's like they give you like a, a two tables, like something very local, right? And then they tell you, okay, what, I'm, what, 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 do you, what options do you set up here? Like uh, uh, many to many, one to many, or things like that, right? So many questions like that. Awesome. So I guess, what would your recommendation be for someone who's brand new? Would, would you say just study, you know, study up on data modeling, really hammer on that point and take it? Or would you say, you know what, you should probably work as a work with Power BI in a professional setting or in another analyst role before you take the exam? Well, of course, it's better if you can work with the tool in professional setting, but that was not the case for me, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, when we talk about your course, I mean, this, this was really helpful to, to need to help me know, okay, this is all the piece I, pieces I need. Um, there, were, there were a little bit of question around uh, the first part, which is not very difficult, which is like uh, the data quality, like uh, the profiling, what to say to tell you, okay, how many null values and things like that. You remember mm -hmm. when you, you in the, um, the, 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 transform, the transformation tool? The query when, editor tool. The query editor where you uh, activate the option to say, okay, uh, you're going to see like the distribution of the values mm -hmm. and uh, like a tip, right? Or like the quality of the data. They are the, I was surprised because uh, there were like three or four questions about that. So my, my suggestion is check this one because it's very easy to be honest. It's not difficult. Right. And uh, it's like, uh, and, and I was lucky because I, I was not sure if it was like column distribution, column uh, profiling. And I was like, oh, and I was like uh, extremely like, oh, I, it's so easy. I should know that, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is just a very basic option, to be honest. So let's close out the conversation on what do you see the value of certifications? Because what I think I'm going to start telling people who have no experience is I think you should go for the Tableau desktop specialist certification over the exam DA100. Because the de desktop specialist is designed for someone who has three months of worth of experience to where the exam DA 100, I, I think that you need at least what, one or two years. I, I, last time I checked, they didn't have like a recommended amount of time using the tool or being uh, in the space. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, and, and again, this is this, this comment on one of your YouTube videos that kind of, you know, I was kind of, Oh my God, this is going to be much harder than I thought. Right. <laughs> Because, you know, when you look at the Microsoft uh, official website, it, it, it looks so easy, right? They just tell you, oh, you just, you can follow you, our, like, uh, course, right? Like, they, they, they have, like, they, they, they have these right. videos, like, very basic videos. But they're very, very, very basic. And, right. and, and yeah, I agree. And, and but for people that don't really know what, what's going on, they, they, it, it looks like, oh, it's not that hard, right? It, it, they don't really advise you, okay, this is the typical level that we expect. Mm -hmm. So do I think you need two years of experience? Um, it's difficult. Again, that depends on your, your background, right? I mean, I don't, yeah, I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's possible 
because they don't try to trick you that much. This is really the message. I mean, I'll give you another example, right? The case studies at the end. So as I said, there are two of them. Mm -hmm. They give you a lot of information like uh, the, the, the data samples, right? With, uh, with screenshots because everything is, you know, clicks, right? And there's nothing else. And then they will tell you like uh, the customer requests, uh, um, this, this type of user is not allowed to see, uh, you know, like uh, data from a different country. So basically all the, let's say, the user requirement piece is done for you, right? Okay. And, and, and very simple, like, uh, let's say it's someone that, that was like a business analyst and did a very good work to make it very simple to understand what, what the requirement is in the very, very small sentences. So if you really take time to read everything they tell you, and you have time, as I said, in my opinion, then you, have, you really have uh, good ways to uh, find the, the answers to, to the questions. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Good. Yeah, so uh, I guess the, the question I wanted to close out on, do you think that the, ta what is your motivation for getting the certification? Is it you just, you, you wanna go specifically within the Microsoft route, but do you think that getting a Tableau certification would also, Kind of help brand you better out on the, the marketplace yeah well yeah that that's the that, that my motivation was uh improving my my resume to be honest mm -hmm. based on the as i said earlier uh, i saw there were a lot of jobs that were requiring power bi but you're right right now i guess the tableau would be the top tool even though in europe it's a bit more balanced i think mm -hmm. in the us it's really a very let's say um, big domination that Tableau has, right? But in Europe, it's a little bit more yeah, balanced. Yeah, I'd agree. But uh, Tableau is a leader as we, here as well, but uh, it's a bit more balanced. That's what I'm saying. Right. So in one of the podcast episodes, we interviewed um, Christopher Scott, who's like the one of the Tableau user group leaders in North Carolina. And he was saying mm -hmm. that whether you know Power BI or Tableau, if you know one, you can pretty much figure out the other because they're so similar. So I, I think yeah. I think the advice that I would have for the people who are brand new to analytics and brand new to any BI tool at all would be go ahead and take that desktop specialist certification. It's a lower bar, but it still gives you that branding piece. And then, you know, maybe get your first analytics job and work for a while because these, these concepts that you have, like the data modeling concepts are pretty second nature. So you can just go through yeah. the questions to where someone who is brand new to not only the tool, but also analytics in general, they're, they're just not going to be able to pass. Yeah, well, I, I, in this case, I, I think the best is that the people uh, read about the bit of data modeling, not advanced, mm -hmm. just like what is the star schema, for example, what is the dimension, what is the fact table? And but I'm not talking about like uh, doing like hardcore SQL coding. I'm just, I'm just talking about the concept. Because as you said, a lot of this is handled by the tool. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's, I mean, Power BI allows to do many things without really coding, except the DAX piece, a little bit of coding because you have these formulas. Uh, but, but for let's say everything that's kind of the, the basic things, you can pretty much get around without doing uh, coding or so. Awesome. Well, Arnaud, I really appreciate your time and also congratulations sure. on getting the certification. And thanks for your course because it's uh, thanks to you also that I passed. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Personal branding is something that we cover in depth in our podcast. To date, we have over 40 long form interviews from data scientists at Facebook to hiring managers to even people who are coaching analysts on how to get their next job. So if you want to get your next opportunity, go check out some of those podcast videos.